everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so today I'm going to be reviewing the record of the month from Vinyl Me Please. I did this a bit different. I actually already unboxed it. I've been listening to it for a week. It felt really weird not doing it with you guys because I always unbox it with you guys. I just wanted to offer you guys a little more. I wanted to talk about the music, maybe break down the lyrics and, and what I heard on it and why I thought it was great. And not just, you know, show you what's in the box. I will break down the packaging and everything that came with the package uh, because Final Me Please does a great job of putting everything so nicely together. Um, but yeah, you'll let me know if, if it makes a difference for you, if, if, if you like it better than what I was doing before. Um, so, as always, they throw in this little breakdown. Let's just jump right into it. As you read from the title, there's no surprise. <laughs> this is St. Vincent's Mass Deduction uh, album. Some words from Tyler Barstow, very insightful as always. Packaged by MC. You have the cocktail pairing, which goes with your album. Um, keep that in the sleeve for future reference. And then they throw in this awesome print. I, I don't think I've seen a print that I don't like. All of it is just very interesting. They do a great job of finding these people. This is by Megan Boker. Uh, she's a graphic designer living in and working in New York City. So very interesting. Um, personally, I think it represents a spectrum of the music. Now that I've listened to it, there's a bit of an intensity going on here in the middle, um, which I think would be like the electronic sound that they bring in and then kind of working within this confined space that is, I guess, rock. Because they are considered to be more of a... I saw on Wikipedia they were being called art rock, an art rock band. Sort of like an avant-garde um, rock band. They, they kind of push the limitations of what rock music is supposed to sound like. So they work outside of this, I guess, spectrum. Um, but yeah, but it's still confined to this idea. So I don't know, maybe that's what they were going for. That's the great thing about music and art. You can come away with whatever interpretation you want. Um, so that's always fun. And then they threw in this transfer. Um, I'll show you what that transfer is supposed to look like because it doesn't look like anything here. Maybe you can see a bit of it. Uh, it's actually in the, supposed to be the back side of the, of the um, album sleeve, which I will show you in a second. They also threw in this booklet here with all the sales and records that they can have in the member store from here to December. Um, jump on that if you haven't already. If you want to sign up, you want to get next month's record, which is Miles Davis' Sorcerer album. If you're into jazz, you want to start, it's a great way to do it because they're pressing that album from the analog tapes, which means that the quality is going to be amazing and uh, worth a whole lot more than the, uh, I think it's 30 bucks a month for the subscription. If you want $10 off, just give me your email, reach through me on here with a comment or a message or Instagram, which I think feels, I feels like it's the fastest way because they, the message is to me right away and Gmail just sends it to me like a week later. <laughs> so uh, do that if you want. Uh, I get 10 bucks, you get 10 bucks, so that's cool. Um, <clears throat> let me show you the record. This is the sleeve. This is the front side here. Very interesting. And then the back side, which is what the transfer looks like. And even the, 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 the spine has different color, actually all sides of it, well, just the top and the sides there. But uh, really, really cool, interesting. And then the record itself was packaged in this super bright pink paper sleeve. I took the, the hype sticker from the shrink wrap and put it on the sleeve. Didn't want to get rid of it, thought it looked cool. And let me show you this beautiful record here. Look at this, beautiful blue record. It's a bit heavier than the standard pressing, which is great. Um, it sounds amazing. It b just pumps through my speakers like no other. Um, I downloaded the digital download. I have it on my iPod. I listen to it in my car. Sounds good there too. It sounds, you know, whatever on my phone because the speakers are like very shitty. But the record on the player has just been phenomenal. There's a lot of bass to it. I'll break that down for you guys in a second. But it's been the best experience through there. Um, and then, if that wasn't enough, they threw in a booklet. This very nice booklet. Uh, lyrics laid out. We got a picture of her. Really cool and very beautiful. Um, this is, this is very important. I, I was able to listen to the music and enjoy it. But reading it as you're kind of listening to it gives you a different perspective. Now, full disclosure, this is my first 
experience with her and her album from beginning to end. You know, before I've kind of listened to a song here and there. Uh, I actually listened to, where is it? New York on the um, on the Song Exploder podcast. If you haven't picked that up, if you haven't listened to it, definitely recommend it. If you like learning about the process, the artistic process of writing a song from beginning to end, this is the podcast for you. Um, she broke down New York from its beginning stages, from the concept to the development to the final product. And she just fills in the gaps as to like the inspiration and what what she was looking for. Um, there's a lot that goes into it and it helps you appreciate it later on because you get to hear it and think about it later. Um, and then of course, being able to read the uh, lyrics is really cool too. Um, overall, this album, from beginning to end, is an amazing album. It, uh, it touches on so many different things, just with the lyrics alone. Um, they're very deep and layered and it's cool because she packages it in this really electric sounding album um i felt like it was flipped on its head because it's considered a rock group or whatever because she does play guitar so actually the f why i learned about her or how i learned about her in the first place guitar center did this little thing with her where she talked about her favorite guitar and her strumming style and where she learned and picked up all her techniques and stuff like that technical shit you know and uh she was just so weird and out there and uh it really made me want to hear her music and then I heard about her album, the self-titled album, the one that came out before this one. Won a Grammy, did really, really well. So she was on my list, and now when my only please put this album out, I, I was super happy about it. Because now I actually had to listen to it and make time for it. Um, but yeah, so you have synthesizers. You have, actually there's a list of all the instruments back here with all the artists. You have, of course, Annie Clark, who is St. Vincent. That's her real name, uh, playing the guitar, and she's got vocals. She's got some backup vocals as well, but she's got uh, programming, like modular synthesizers. So there's a lot of these like droney sounding electric um, rhythms going on, and those are layered and, and kind of built up with the guitar that she plays. Um, there's a lot of distortion and fuzziness to it, so it makes it sound almost like a like a like a modular uh, synthesizer or whatever. Um, you got some piano, you got some, <laughs> you got some lap steel, or oh, pedal steel, I'm sorry, pedal steel. Um, you typically don't hear that in a rock album, maybe here and there, but the, she used a lot of it in some of the slower songs, which gives it this just warm feeling. Uh, you hear it a lot in bluegrass and country music. So I thought that was really, really cool and it blends very well with the, with the droniness of the synthesizers. Um, she touches again a lot on the on, on different things here and there. Uh, like for example, I thought that was very interesting. She has a song called "Los uh, Los Angeles," which kind of just talks about fame and having to deal with certain things. Like for example, in Los Angeles, Los Angeles, the waves just never break. They build and build until you don't have no escape. But how can I leave? I just follow my hood to the sea. But how can I leave? I just follow my hood to the sea, go to sleep. Um, she goes on and says, Oh, Lola, we really did it now. I'm a monster and you're now, and you're my sacred cow. Oh, I can keep running. No, I can't keep running. So there's this feeling of not being able to escape the fame and, and the shit that comes with it. Because then in the next song, she further reflects on it, at least I think, through the song Happy Birthday Johnny. It's very personal, it's a lot slower than a lot of the other songs on the album. The third verses were really stuck out to me. Uh, she said, when I said, let me think, and you yelled through your teeth, accused me of acting like all royalty, always for show, no true charity, you saw me on magazines and TV. But if they only knew the real version of me, only you know the secrets of swamp and the fear. What happened to blood, our family, Annie, which is her, how can you do this to me? So she kind of shouts herself out in the album, in, her, in the song, and kind of just questions her intentions, what she might have gone through, through this change, because again, I mentioned that her album did really well. It got a lot of attention, it won a Grammy, so I'm sure there's a lot of things that happened to her personal life, and she kind of exposes that through that song there. Um, 
the song Savior kind of touches on sexual themes a little bit. Uh, sort of a bit of sadomasochism, you know, some S&M type of thing where she talks about, for example, I'll just read you the lyrics. Uh, you dress me up in a nurse's outfit. It rides and sticks to my thighs and hips. You put me in a teacher's denim skirt, ruler and desk so I can make it hurt. So she talks about how she's getting dressed up, how she's supposed to be pretty much taking these roles of, of power, a teacher, a nun, a cop. And in the chorus, she says, Love you to the grave and farther. Honey, I can't be your martyr. Maybe it's just human nature, but honey, I can't be your savior. So she's thinking about it. She's talking about how she loves this person and how it's kind of a normal thing to have someone want to be subjected to this type of, you know, sort of, again, masso, um, sadomasochistic type of thing. And maybe having a conflict with it, not feeling like it's right. But then she says, but then you say, please. Then you say, please. So she does it anyways because that person's asking that from her. Um, so it's very interesting. To, again, it touches on a lot of stuff. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with conflict. A lot of it has to do with her own personal feelings about things. And um, just a great album to reflect on. Then there's songs like Sugar Boy, which is, I think, one of my favorite songs. Uh, I'm a lot like you, boys. I'm, a, I'm alone like you, girls. That's just the chorus. And she just repeats that over and over again. And again, it kind of does have this sort of droney sound to it. It's, uh, it's danceable. I mean, there's a lot that she offers uh, in this music. It's serious lyrics packaged in this very poppy and approachable, danceable album. I think it's a hard thing to do. Um, and I mean, pills, for example, I think obviously talks about people's dependency on, on, on you know, opiates and, and depression pills and all that other shit for anxiety uh, and how it kind of takes over people. Uh, the, it starts off with pills to wake, pills to sleep, pills, pills, pills every day of the week, pills to work, pills to think, pill, pills, pills for the family. So. Mom and dad can take them, the kids are on them, you got them on Zoloft or whatever. Um, and just, just keeps going throughout the whole song. Um, Mass Seduction, the self-titled song on here is pretty good too. She offers this interesting thing, it's kind of sexual too. She talks about how I can't turn off what turns me on. I can't turn off what turns me on. I hold you like a weapon. Mass destruction, don't turn off what turns me on. Again, dealing with sexual um, themes where maybe they're into something they're not supposed to be in, you know, uh, and knowing that it's not right, but then at the same time, not wanting to have it be corrected or, or fixed. Um, so I don't know, like, there's just a lot that she puts into, again, her lyrics and the music itself. It pushes your understanding of what music is supposed to sound like. And... She finishes off the song with, I think, a very sad song. It's a smoking section. Um, sometimes I go to the edge of my roof and I think I'll jump just to punish you. And if I should float on the taxis below, no one will notice, no one will know. It's just the overall thing on this song is suicide and killing yourself and, and just feeling empty and alone. Um... But then it, she finishes off with, it's not the end, it's not the end. So there's a bit of optimism put in there as well. Um, at first listen, first impression, I thought it was really cool because it, it just sounded different and it really, that interests me a lot. <laughs> but then I started listening to the lyrics and I was like, holy shit, like this is just, just deeper than I imagined it being. And I picked up a thing or two here and there that I thought sounded great and I would go back and listen to it. But then that was sort of out of context because when you read the whole the whole song and every bit that she put into it um it breaks it down further into something serious and dark so aside from the colorful pictures and images that she uses to, in the packaging and this overall aesthetic uh this is a serious serious album and easily one of the best albums of the year so i'm gonna put that out there simply because of just this whole overall uh packaging that they put into it um i'm gonna listen to the rest of her music 
find her other albums on vinyl or whatever I can get my hands on and then maybe reflect on this versus that and kind of contrast and compare see if it's in a, a step up from where she was before uh, if you are deep into her music you know all her music please give me give me a heads up let me know if this is radically different from what she's done before I would love to hear your opinion as always. So there's my breakdown. I kind of went all over the place, talked about the lyrics and the music itself. Just in a, just a, a way for you to maybe have an idea of what it sounds like. Ultimately, you decide whether or not it's worth your time. Give it a shot. I would always recommend you take it, you know, at least take some time to, to look into it. Hopefully, my understanding of the music will help you kind of navigate through it and then maybe you can come up with your own ideas and then share them with me. Um, but that's it. I hope it didn't drag on for too long. Highly recommend this album to you guys. Um, step outside your comfort zone, listen to something different. But yeah, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. I think I deserve it. I would greatly appreciate that. You can find everything linked down in the description below. I want to do a needle drop on there on Instagram so you can check out some of the music. But until then, take care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you guys next week with a, with a vinyl haul. I want to show you all the other records I picked up. Uh, so, yeah, take care of yourselves. And I'll see you then.